One of the most important ideas in spectroscopy is that the intensity of absorption or emission of light by an atom or a molecule depends on the transition dipole moment of the atom or molecule. So, let us look at what this transition dipole moment is first and then in this lecture we will derive that the intensity depends on this quantity. So, assume that the molecule is in a state psi i let us say this is the initial state of the molecule and let us say phi f is the final state of the molecule. The transition dipole moment is defined in terms of these initial and final state and one more quantity which is the dipole moment operator. So, let us look at what this dipole moment operator is. To define the dipole moment operator, we start with the dipole moment property which is this vector quantity which is the sum over i q i r i where q i is the point charge at the position r i. So, using this property we can define the dipole moment operator mu hat as the corresponding uh, position vector replaced by the position operator. So, this dipole moment operator has three components the x component would be sum over q i times x i and similarly you can write the expressions for the y and z component. Now, the intensity of a transition from the state i to the state f is proportional to the square of the following integral psi i r comma t mu operator psi f r comma t the magnitude whole squared. This integral is called the transition dipole moment integral and this integral is usually denoted by mu of i f. So, in other words the intensity of the transition from i to f is proportional to mu i f magnitude squared we will now derive this result. Let us start by assuming that the molecule is isolated and in the dark and the Hamiltonian of this molecule is H naught. So, this is the Hamiltonian of the isolated molecule. We assume that this Hamiltonian does not depend on time. So, the solutions of the Schrodinger equation of this Hamiltonian, the Schrodinger equation is i h bar del psi by del t is equal to h naught psi and the solutions are psi n r comma t is equal to phi n of r multiplied by e to the power of i e n t by h bar where h naught phi n of r is equal to e n phi n of r. We have already seen this result in our study of the basics of quantum mechanics. The solutions of the Schrodinger equation are stationary states because psi star psi is time independent. Consider this molecule interacting with light. So, light has an electric field and a magnetic field associated with it. The interaction of the molecule with the electric field 
is most significant and we will only consider this interaction and ignore the interaction with the magnetic field because that is relatively less significant as compared to the interaction with the electric field. Let us now quantify the interaction of the electric field with the molecule. For this we assume that the light is in the optical range by which I mean that it is between the UV to the IR range and the corresponding wavelength of UV is about 1000 angstroms and the IR is about 10 to the power of 7 angstroms. Now, the size of the molecule itself is few angstroms. This implies that the electric field is constant at every part of the molecule. The functional form of the electric field of frequency nu is the vector E is equal to E naught cosine 2 pi nu t. So, let us assume that here is the molecule and it has point charges in it and this is the direction of the electric field interacting with the molecule. The scalar potential corresponding to the interaction of the field with the molecule can be written as phi capital phi r comma t is equal to minus the vector r dotted with the field E. So, this is the potential of the field at the point having the position vector r. Note that this form of the potential gives back the electric field as the negative gradient of the potential. The potential energy of a point charge q in this field is q multiplied by the potential and this we denote as V of R comma T. This is the potential energy. Let us look at the potential energy of the interaction of the molecule which is made up of several point charges with the electric field. The form of the total interaction of the electric field with the molecule is V of R comma T is equal to sum over I all the point charges of the molecule multiplied by the potential of the field. If we write the expression of the potential this becomes sum over I Q I minus ri dot e and if we write this explicitly the form of the electric field then this becomes q i ri dot e naught cosine of 2 pi nu t. We notice here that this summation is nothing but the dipole moment mu and so we can write the potential energy as minus the dot product of the dipole moment and the electric field. Suppose that the molecule is initially isolated and the light is turned on at t is equal to 0, light at t is equal to 0. Then the initial Hamiltonian of the molecule is H naught and the Hamiltonian with the light on becomes H naught plus V of R comma T, where this potential energy which is the interaction of the molecule with the light starts at 
t is equal to 0. So, this is only at t greater than or equal to 0. The problem now boils down to solving the Schrodinger equation for this Hamiltonian that is i h bar del psi by del t is equal to h psi where the Hamiltonian is given here and furthermore we assume that this is a small perturbation. The procedure that we will use to solve the Schrodinger equation for small perturbation is time dependent perturbation theory. And this will use the basic quantum mechanics ideas that we have talked about in the previous lectures. A molecule usually has an infinite number of stationary states, but for simplicity of the derivation and for notation, we will consider that there are only two states. So, we will say that the two states are psi 1 of r comma t, these are stationary states and we write them in the form psi 1 phi 1 r e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar and another state psi 2 r comma t is equal to phi 2 r e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h bar. Here phi 1 and phi 2 are eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian h naught. Now, it is easy to verify that these stationary states phi 1 and phi 2 are solutions of the Schrodinger equation. So, let us just confirm that with one of these functions let us say psi 1. So, i h bar del psi by del t is equal to h naught psi. If we substitute uh, check with psi 1. So, we substitute into the Schrodinger equation i h bar phi 1 r e to the power of minus e 1 t by h bar del of this del t is equal to h naught of phi 1 r e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar. Now, since this part does not depend on time, we can take it out and this becomes i h bar phi 1 r and differential is e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar multiplied by minus i e 1 by h bar that is the LHS and we can simplify this a little bit more and the h naught can be cancelled out i times i is minus 1. So, this becomes e 1 phi 1 of r e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar and the RHS is h naught times phi 1 we know is e 1 times phi 1 because phi 1 is an eigenfunction and the rest we can just write like this and so the LHS is equal to the RHS confirming that this phi 1 here or for that matter phi 2 are solutions of the Schrodinger equation. In this two state system we will further consider that the system is initially in the state psi 1 and we will proceed with the derivation based on that. Since the system is in the state psi 1, we can write its wave function psi r comma t as psi 1 of r comma t. Now, we consider that the light is turned on at t is equal to 0. So, the Hamiltonian for time t greater than 0 
becomes H naught plus the interaction of the molecule with the light. This is for T greater than 0. The wave function psi now is not a eigenfunction of this Hamiltonian H. So, let us say that the wave function now has this form psi of r comma t is a linear combination of psi 1 and psi 2 where these coefficients a 1 and a 2 are time dependent. Our job will be to determine these coefficients a 1 and a 2. Now, it is important to note that when the wave function is a linear combination like this, the term a i star t a i t which is the magnitude of a i t square is the probability of finding the system in the state i. So, a 1 t magnitude squared is the probability of system being in state 1 and similarly, a 2 t magnitude square is the probability of the system being in state 2. This is an important thing we have to keep in mind and with this we will now go ahead and calculate a 1 and a 2 and then use this to find the probability of the system being in the state 2 and therefore, undergoing a transition from the state 1 to state 2.